Hi friends, in our last session, we have seen aim of speed and feed regulation and even we have studied that why we required multi-speed gearbox in machine tools. In today's session, we are going to see progression laws in that we are going to study arithmetic progression in detail. So this is Prasant Kagvi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin with our topic. Now. As you can see on your screen, that progression law. So the first question comes over here that why we need to use a progression law. So the answer to this question is to find different speed steps. Now speed steps means the number of total number of speeds which are involved in a gearbox. You would have heard about a six speed gearbox, eight speed gearbox, nine speed gearbox, 12 speed gearbox, right? 16 speed gearbox even in automobiles the maximum is a 6 speed gearbox which you would have heard right so what is that 6 speed which means that a gearbox is consists of 6 different speeds right that is n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 up and n6 now how these laws are going to help so these laws are going to decide that after n1 n2 should be how much okay then after N2, N3 should be how much? N4 should be how much? N5 should be how much? And finally N6 you would have been given that we need to keep a N6 so and so. For example, that N1 is 1000. Okay, initial speed, minimum speed has to be 1000 RPM. Okay, and final speed it has been mentioned that it should be 5000 RPM. Right, right. So in between that N2, N3, N4 and N5 should be how much? So that will be decided by making use of this geometric, pro, uh, sorry, by making use of this progression laws. These progression laws are going to help to determine this number of speed steps. Okay. Now next is to find a relation between two spindle speed steps. That is what is the relation between N1 and N2? What is the relation between N2 and N3? Now what is the relation between minimum speed and maximum speed so this we can determine by making use of a progression laws so i hope that you are clear that why we required progression laws now let us see the types of progression laws so you can see the list of, list is given the first is called arithmetic progression denoted by ap second one is geometric progression denoted by gp third one is harmonic progression denoted by hp and fourth one is logarithmic progression denoted by lp so we are going to study in detail all the four types and then we are going to see comparison of all these four and which is the best suitable geometric progression for a speed distribution that we are going to consider. Okay, so let's begin with our first type that is our arithmetic progression. So let us first understand that in arithmetic progression what is going to happen, what we are going to consider. So we would say the difference between any two successive spindle speed is going to remain constant. Okay, in arithmetic progression, remember difference between two successive spindle speed is going to remain constant. So let's take an example that n max is a maximum spindle speed in RPM and it is denoted by nz. So if it is a six speed, then we can say that n max is equal to how much? So n6. Okay. Let's say next is n minimum, which is called a minimum spindle speed in RPM. So it would be obviously the first spindle speed, which would be a minimum speed. So that is equal to n1. Now, z indicates the total number of spindle speed steps, which means if it is a six speed engine, sorry, six speed gearbox. So we can say z is equal to six. Okay. If it is a eight speed gearbox, then z is equal to eight. So you can see I have written in a bracket. So N1, N2, N3, N4 up to we would say Nz. Okay, that is a maximum spindle speed. Now how we can determine the successive spindle speeds? So you can see that the difference between two successive spindle speed is constant. So that constant let's say is denoted by AT. Okay, so you can see I have written AT is equal to N2 minus N1, right? Which is equal to N3 minus N2, which is equal to N4 minus N3. And which is equal to nz minus nz minus 1. That is nz is the maximum speed and uh, its previous speed would be nz minus 1. Now how we can determine in a data, in a numerical, you would be given the minimum speed and a maximum speed. Remember, you would be given minimum speed and a maximum speed and you would have to determine the intermediate speed that is n2, n3, n4 is 
how much okay so for that even you need to determine the constant at is how much so how you can do that so let us understand now as you can see n1 is equal to n minimum okay now that is our minimum so the next speed n2 would be how much so it would be equal to n1 plus at that is a constant our difference between two successive spindle speed okay so we need to add this constant at to determine the next speed even we can write this equation is equal to n minimum plus at this is another form to write the equation next let's say we need to find out n3 so n3 is how much so we would say previous speed plus the constant so previous speed is how much n2 plus at now if we if we need to use the minimum speed so we can say that we can substitute this n2 from this previous equation n minimum plus at right so this n3 is going to become n minimum plus 280 right similarly next n4 which is equal to n3 plus at now in terms of minimum speed we can write n3 is how much so n3 is n minimum plus 280 right so over here i have written n minimum plus how much 380 okay Let's say that final speed is n z, so we can write n z is equal to n z minus one plus a t, right? So this can be written as n minimum plus in a bracket z minus one into a t. Now how the I have written this z minus one into a t? So you can see in a previous case of n four over here there is n three plus a t, right? And over here it is plus three a t. So whatever there was in a subscript, I have multiplied it by this constant value that is three over here. So similarly we can say in this equation a subscript is z minus one. So over here we can multiply it by z minus one with a constant a t. So this is our final speed that is our n max. Okay, so consider this equation only. Okay, that is n minimum plus z minus one a t is equal to n max. Now from this equation we are going to make a t as a subject. Remember we are going to make constant a t as a subject. So what is going to become? So you can see on your screen a t is equal to n z minus n one, which means n max minus n mean, n max minus n mean upon z minus one. So this is our final equation to determine the constant value a t. Once we have determined a t. then we can use this equations to determine the successive spindle speed that is n2 n3 n4 n5 and so on up to n z okay guys so i hope that you are clear that how we can determine the different spindle speeds now let us see further uh, now consider any two intermediate speed ranges let's say nk and nk plus 1 okay by using this we can determine the upper limit of a diameter and a lower limit of a diameter which can be machine corresponding to the given spindle speed okay that is n1 and n2 or we can say in this case nk and nk plus 1 so let's take an example that for nk the diameter of a work piece that can be machined can be determined by the equation of our uh, cutting speed that is v is equal to pi dn by 1000 if you remember so from that equation we are going to make dk as a subject so we can write dk is equal to 1000v upon pi nk okay so let's say this is our upper limit of a diameter that is a maximum diameter that can be machined at a minimum speed that is let's say n1 or we can say nk okay this is a minimum speed compared to our next speed that is nk plus 1 okay with respect to that now now uh, what is the diameter of a work piece that can be machined at our speed nk plus 1 so my example is let's say nk plus 1 is what n2 okay so we can say dk plus 1 is equal to same equation 1000v upon pi nk plus 1 so we would say that corresponding to this if n2 is higher so definitely the diameter value would be lower because the denominator is higher so the value of diameter would be lower in our this case the denominator n1 is a minimum speed right it is a lower speed so diameter is definitely going to be a higher speed so with respect to that we can say that it is a upper limit okay and n2 and a diameter corresponding to nk plus 1 is a lower limit so what is the difference or we would say what is the diameter range which we could machine between two successive spindle speed so we would say it is given by delta dk is equal to dk minus dk plus 1 now as we know the equation for both these diameters so i have directly substituted and written the equation 1000v upon pi in a bracket 1 upon nk minus 1 upon nk plus 1 
so from this equation we can determine the diameter range between two successive spindle speed remember this is the most important equation to determine the diameter range now next is a gear ratio between two successive spindle speeds that is denoted by phi so obviously we know that uh, final speed upon initial speed is our gear ratio so our final speed or we would say higher speed is what so nk plus 1 and a lower speed is what so it is nk so the gear ratio phi would be uh, nk plus 1 upon and this is a very simple equation which even you know we, you would have studied in your chapter of k, a subject of k tom kinematics and theory of machines okay now example let us take an example to understand this arithmetic progression so i am taking maximum spindle speed n max is equal to 385 rpm minimum spindle speed n minimum is equal to 30 rpm let's say the number of speed steps is 12 which means our gearbox is a 12 speed gearbox remember i have explained this z is equal to 12 means 12 speed gearbox now let's say our cutting speed which is small v is equal to 20 meter per minute for a particular operation so from this data we can say that first we can determine the constant value that is 80 now what is the equation to determine 80 so we can say 80 is equal to n max minus n minimum upon z minus 1 now what is n max so n max in our case is 385 and n minimum is minus 30 so we can say that z is 12 minus 1 so the final com constant value would be 32.273 revolution per minute now by using this constant we can determine the speed ranges that is n1 n2 n3 up to n12 that is the maximum spindle speed so let's see further in our next i have shown a chart over here you can see intermediate speed values and optimum diameter by making use of an arithmetic progression so as you can see in a serial number first column i have shown that 12 speeds are there 1 2 3 4 up to 12 second column is of rpm that is n which we are going to determine phi now phi is a gear ratio column dk is a diameter corresponding to our particular speed okay that is particular rpm for n1 it would be somewhat let's say 212.21 similarly we can determine the diameter ranges that is dk as you can see in the last column that is 109.98 so we know the formula to determine a diameter range that is equal to dk minus dk plus 1 now over here remember one thing that higher is a diameter if a diameter of workpiece is much higher then corresponding spindle speed would be lower okay remember so as you can see that a spindle speed is 30 rpm so corresponding to that a diameter that of a workpiece that can be machined is 212.21 rpm as the spindle speed is going to increase you can clearly observe the diameter ranges or a diameter for a workpiece is going to reduce so at a minimum diameter of a workpiece we can keep a maximum rpm or a maximum spindle speed okay so you can clearly see that at a minimum rpm the diameter is maximum okay now for a second rpm that is n2 we know 62.273 so corresponding gear ratio even we can determine and dk would be how much so it is 102.23 and corresponding to that once we have determined d1 and second is d2 so we can say diameter range delta dk would be how much so it would be d1 minus d2 so over here d1 is what so 212.21 and d2 is what so 102.23 so over here you can clearly see i have written 212.21 minus 102.23 so answer would be 109.98 i hope that you are clear in these first two rows okay i am explaining only the first two rows similarly we can write down for up to 12 speeds in a successive we know that successive spindle speed would be the addition of a constant okay so you can see n4 is how much so n4 is equal to n3 plus a constant similarly n5 is how much so it is equal to n4 plus the constant n6 is n5 plus the constant that is 32.273 okay so similarly up to we get n12 so n12 would be how much so it would be n11 plus the constant which is 352.73 plus 32.7 uh, 32.273 which is final I answer 385 which was given in our data you need to match the final n12 maximum speed with a given data that was given n max is equal to 385 okay if the final equation in a chart is wrong so it gives an indication that you would have made certain mistake in your calculation so do calculation accordingly okay similarly you can see that uh, for every speed 
we would have we are going to get a different gear ratio okay you can see 1.5 to 1.3 for 1.25 okay and correspondingly we can determine a diameter d corresponding to the speeds and finally diameter ranges now what we need to observe from this chart is that uh, if you see carefully that at 30 rpm that is minimum speed diameter is 212.21 mm okay so only after removing a amount of 109.9 at rpm you can shift the speed from 30 to 62.273 rpm which means that to shift to a next speed that is n2 first you would have to remove the material that is 109.98 mm of material from a workpiece and finally you reach the value of 102.23 mm once you reach this value of a diameter of a workpiece only then you can shift to the next speed that is n2 unless and until you cannot change the speed of your machine tool okay so this you need to keep in mind so this is the main difference okay now similarly you can see that when you need to change from the n2 speed to n3 speed that is 62 to 94 you need to remove how much material so 34.9 mm of material has to be removed and so finally your workpiece diameter will be reduced to 67.33 mm so corresponding once you have arrived at 67.33 mm your corresponding spindle speed you need to keep 94.546 similarly you can see n4 n5 so this is the amount of material which has to be removed which has to be considered before shifting to the next successive spindle speed now if you observe carefully the last three speeds that is n10 n11 and n12 so you can see n10 is 320 rpm and a corresponding diameter required is 19.87 mm okay so just only removing the amount 1.82 mm you can shift to the next speed that is 352 rpm right so what does this indicate that by removing just a small amount of material you can get a speed change from n10 to n11 that is 320 to 352 which indicates that a speed distribution at a higher speed is redundant which means it is improper it is unnecessary whereas the speed distribution at a lower speed is improper it is not distributed properly you can clearly see large amount of material has to be removed to shift to the next speed again a large amount of material has to be removed to the third speed again a large amount of material has to be removed to the fourth speed and even the speed distribution is not proper so what we get a conclusion from this we can say we are, we are going to make a remark for arithmetic progression that at a lower spindle speed the diameter range is wide and hence we need to add more speed steps between a calculated value whereas at a higher spindle speed which we have seen n10 n11 n12 right the diameter range is very narrow very short and hence some of the spindle speed steps which are given are redundant that is not required which are unnecessary so we can say that even from an arithmetic progression we are not getting the required speed distribution okay guys so i hope that you are clear in today's session today we have discussed about arithmetic progression in our next session we are going to study geometric progression so till then stay tuned and thank you all